Dreamers Den, a podcast about daring to dream, with host Brad Robbins. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dreamers Den. I'm Brad Robbins, and I'm joined today by none other than Casey Elliott, film actor, solo recording artist, and my brother in a boy band. <laughs> That's right. Man. We, we've become very close over the years. We've, we've seen a few things together. <laughs> We were reminiscing about these all these gentry photos at your wall, and every one of them has such a story to it. That's that's right. Like I, I feel like you more than anyone who might come on the show will appreciate uh, these photos. Yeah, and it was such a process. I had to decide. Okay, I I, I don't just want a photo of the group. It had to be a photo of a of a moment in time that that tells a story. Oh yeah, every one of these is. How did you do that? I mean, that. We have tens of thousands of photos. <laughs> well, so so I started out, and, and you may not even remember this. I started out by by surveying the group. And I was like, guys, oh. what what were the coolest things that we've done as a group? I remember that. And just kind of getting everybody's feedback. And then from there I had to go. Luckily, our photographer Levitt has organized the photography over the years beautifully. So yeah. it was pretty easy to find everything, but it was a process because there are thousands of photos. Yeah. Um you but, did it. Yeah, we did it, and and it's it's cool. I mean, you know, coming into this this space uh, every day, being able to remember, like, okay, like, you know, that moment occurred because we dared to dream. Yeah, you know, which is exactly what we're here to talk about today. Love it. And obviously, I want to get into some gentry chatter. I'm sure people will be interested to know some some fun stories there. But uh, film actor, I mean, you've been in a lot of movies, and I've known you a long time, but <laughs> I even went through looking across a number of genres that you've played in, you know, uh, Retreat to Paradise, which you filmed, that was in Fiji? Yeah, Fiji. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, what was that like? It was uh, colder than I thought it would be. <laughs> 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 you know, we're like, all we had all these scenes in the water and we're just like miserable, right? It's just freezing cold and you're like, this is a tropical island, it's supposed to be warm. <laughs> Uh, but no, it was, it was beautiful. The people, the native people of Fiji were just delightful. Um, yeah, fun experience. And then of course you're probably most recognized around the Utah scene in the film world is, you know, various church films, yeah. um, including, and I, I would put this in that like church religious category, the lamb of God concert. Oh yeah. We played Peter. Yeah. What was that experience like? You know, I, uh, I was familiar with the music somewhat i had kind of heard bits and pieces of it um but i wasn't that familiar and when rob reached out to me about it i was right in the middle of rehearsing for a, a stage production of tale of two cities at hail center theater and and i was just it was just really busy and i i was working at the time as well and um i almost said no just because of what was going on but something inside of me was like i feel like i need to do this and even during the rehearsal kind of process of learning the music before we showed up on set, I was just sort of like, why am I doing this? This is so stressful. I'm really stressed out right now. And I felt like this weight of like, I I have to do this and I have to do it well. And I, I don't know, I just felt like a pressure that I don't always feel. I'm I'm pretty casual when it comes to performing. I'm just like, it, it is what it is, you know? <laughs> but I felt a lot of pressure and, and, um, and it ended up being one of the, the neatest experiences. Um, the music and the way that it was filmed kind of more intimately was just really impactful for, for me and everybody on set. And then I, it just has resonated with so many people. Yeah. That, that was a thing that, that stood out to me. I mean, I, I was obviously at arm's length watching you, you know, rehearse and go through it and then saw it when it, when it aired. Uh, but I think I think the moment for me when I realized like you had been a part of something truly special was this last summer. We were down in Peru, and we had been invited to do a, a fireside with Gentry for the missionaries, the the uh, LDS missionaries down there. And um, we were running. If you remember, like the fireside was running a little bit long. And we're like, oh, we got to cut something. Oh, yeah. And there had been a special request prior to the fireside that you sang a song from the show. Yeah. What was the song again? Um, it was, uh, what is it called? Um, I, w I was a fisherman or, oh, what is it called? 
No, whatever it was. I mean, <laughs> it, it was the mission president's wife, and she really, was. really wanted that yeah. song. But we ended up cutting it, and we get done with the fireside, and she gets up to like wrap things up, and she's like, "This has been a great, you know, night. Like, you know, we've we've you know we we felt the spirit. It's been awesome." Um, Casey, will you sing that song though? <laughs> like we were not getting out of there until you sang that song. Well, and and part of my my motivation for suggesting that we cut it is I hadn't really sung it since then. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to botch this. And then of course she's like, and now we're gonna have Casey sing the song. <laughs> like, okay, here we go. Hey, well, the good news was is I, I didn't know the lyrics, so if you botched them, <laughs> you fooled me. That's that's true. All right, so speaking of, of film acting, we need to address your most recent feature. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> so Casey recently starred in the, the the Great American Network's smash hit. I mean, and like dead serious. Like it got like yeah. streamed over a million times of Destined at Christmas and co-starred with my wife, Shay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I remember when when the two of you got cast, you you immediately calling me and being like, bro, like, let's have a chat. Is this weird? And I specifically remember being like, honestly, it's gonna be weirder for you two yeah. than it will be for me. <laughs> and then I was like, You're actually right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I so here's the thing, like as as a performer, it, it's always like hard to watch, and I, I use big air quotes, it, it's harder to watch anything that your friends or someone you know is in yeah. in some ways right because like to to the average patron or viewer it's like they're they're this character they're the star but in the back of your mind they're still like you're yes. just you're casey like it was just shay right but I'll, I'll i'll say this and granted that genre is just is is you know we'll, we'll call it um affectionately known as like the holiday romance cheese like whatever yeah. you want to say right but in spite of all of that, in spite of no, the fact that I knew both of you very, very well, I love the movie. Yeah, it. I think they did a good job. It was. It was. Um, I. I feel like it broke the mold a little bit, and, um, yeah. I. I just think. Uh, and I think maybe a part of it was the fact that Shay and I know each other so well, and we're such good friends. And then of course my daughter being in it as well. Like they're, the whole cast was just very familiar, and so you don't have, you didn't have that kind of initial barrier of getting to know your castmates and finding that connection and charisma and stuff. Cause it's already there, you know? Well, and it not only did, uh, you know, so well that people were talking about it cause it aired like in October, it was like one of the first, if not the first it movie, right? The, the first, yeah. Of like the first of 19 or 20 movies. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's been so popular that they're creating a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> with aliens. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, I I I'm so excited to to do to do another one. I I have no idea what the plot's going to be <laughs> cuz the movie you, you already found each yeah, other. Yeah, the movie ends with us finding each other and and but I guess maybe now there's the engagement or the wedding or of course there's going to be some kind of misunderstanding and falling and there out. There has to be. <laughs> It's it's a formula. You got to follow the formula. That's right. That's right. And my favorite part is that even though there is a formula and we all know how it's going to end, there's still that question. But are they? <laughs> is this the time that we get thrown the curveball? I mean, it must be. That must be why we keep watching these. <laughs> we know what's going to happen, but we can't help it. Well, that's awesome. I'm I'm excited to see it. Like I said, I I should genuinely enjoyed the first one, so that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I want to transition now to uh, a segment that we call Out of Context. Okay. So I uh, I went back on your Instagram, found a post dated January 22nd, 2016, that if there was ever a photo to encapsulate Gentry meets film actor, I don't know what does. So I've got it here on this iPad. I'm going to hand okay. it to you. Have you take a look at it. And then... <laughs> I need you to explain, explain what is yourself. going on here. Because out of context, this can be a very confusing photo. <laughs> well, Brad, something you don't know about me is I'm I'm really into LARPing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this this is a concept short film that um actually this is how I met Rob Santiano. Oh, no way. And Rob, for our listeners, Rob Santiano 
has shot most of our narrative music videos. And I just, I just loved him on, on this, this project and I've loved working with him on Gentry stuff. But yeah, this was a, a, a short film concept that was done to try to kind of pitch a full feature, a full length feature film. It was called the swordsman. And it was like this secret agent who was like a wizard. And there's cause like a bunch of magic stuff. And, um, and I, I had a few years before this, I had done Zorro at Hale center theater and learned how to fence and everything. And so, um, when they approached me about this and said sword fighting, I was like, I need to, get- actually, actually that's on my resume. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> but these were broad swords. So it was a very much like different kind of sword fighting, which was cool. Yeah, Cause to- Zoro is like fencing. Yeah. Fencing. And these are, you know, both hands, broad swords, huge. You know, were they real, real swords? Yeah. Heavy. Like medieval style. Yeah. And the guy who plays the villain in this scene was like, he was like the fight choreographer. So I would, we rehearsed probably three or four times before we shot it. And, you know, the actor who plays the villain, like puts this mask on and then it cuts and it's the other guy under the mask. And so that's, I'm fighting the instructor. I love it. That's awesome. That's, that's one, uh, that's one prop we have yet to incorporate in one of our shows. <laughs> w- <Yeah>. Wielding swords. <laughs> there's, well, there should be a, uh, there's the movie medley game in our show. There should be something that that has to do with sword sword fighting in our show. Yeah, yeah. Well, so so it's interesting, right? Like you've you've done a lot of different things, um, you know, on, on film, but but you're you're before most people probably know you. I would say, generally speaking, as a musician, but your original passion and kind of trajectory was to get into the film world. Yeah. Um, so I, I got really into acting in high school in theater. Um, my, my first musical was Wizard of Oz. I was a, a winky, a jitterbug, and a citizen of Oz, baby. And, uh, and then the next year I played the lead in the musical Joseph. And I was just, I think at that point, I was just hooked. You know, I just loved it. I was so into theater in high school that I took math, English, science, all like the required classes through an online university that provided like high school courses so that I could take more theater classes. So my senior year, I literally had all theater classes and I actually forgot to do the homework for those online classes until about two weeks before everything was due. And my theater teacher and her daughters like literally helped me finish them so that I could graduate. Jeez. Um, so yeah, after, uh, I, at the end of my high school, I, I auditioned for an acting school, um, in Hollywood, um, that was, uh, it's called AMDA and I got in, I had a scholarship. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to, to do. And then, so fast forward from, from that experience to, what 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 changed? Because you were you were on that trajectory. You stayed there for a while, but but then there was kind of a shift. Yeah, there was. I um, so I I the school was in Hollywood, and I was living down there, and uh, with my grandparents who lived nearby. And I I can't I can't. It's hard to describe what I kind of went through, but I I just felt like I shouldn't be there which is so weird, right? Cause this was my passion. That was your dream. My dream. Um, I, I just loved the idea about, I loved everything about it. Like on paper, it looked exactly like I wanted it to look and, and how I thought I wanted life to be at that point. But I just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable to school. I'd go home to my grandparents. I didn't feel comfortable there. And I just kind of got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to figure out what is going on here. And to make a long story short, I, I think w- what happened is I, f- I realized that, um, that for whatever reason, the timing of me being there wasn't right. And um, for me, it was I felt like it was God telling me, like, I know you really want this, but not yet. You're not ready for it. And, you know, you go through this, this gamut of emotions, like, well, yes, I am. And these are the reasons why, and I can do this and I can do that. And, 
think of all the good I could do and like all this stuff. And, and I just, I, I had to be honest with myself and, and with God and, um, and, and even if you don't believe in God, I think we all kind of feel this, this inner, um, compass that maybe is, is, uh, guiding us one way or another, or speaking to us in various ways. And so anyways, long story short, again, I, I had to make a decision like, do I, do I leave the school and move on to something else or do I just push through it? And I, I ended up leaving and I, I was only there for about three weeks. Mm. Um, and what, when was this, what year? This was in 2001. Okay. So it was the same year I graduated from high school. I think I know why it didn't work out. Because fast forward to 2005, <laughs> suddenly you're dressed like a candlestick, <laughs> sharing the stage with yours truly. Yes, that so is true. I don't. We we don't ever get to talk about this. No. We met in a production of Beauty and the Beast back in 2005. Yeah. And. The only way I could even remotely be convincing as the beast is I had to wear a bright green Hulk jumpsuit. <laughs> the things we do for <laughs> live theater. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I remember um you know fast forward a couple years um my mom was like, "Hey, remember remember Casey Elliott?" I was like, "I think so." Yeah, he just got cast as Rodamaze and Aida. And like I had seen that in high school, so I knew like the role and like you know super buff, like it's a shirtless role. It's right. like you know singing your face off and like notes that men shouldn't even be allowed to sing. It's just crazy part. <laughs> and I was like, wait, that that tall lurpy candlestick guy. <laughs> and she shows me a photo. I'm like, that was under the candlestick. <laughs> Yeah, you know, those candlesticks, you you build up some muscle holding those well, things. The up. reality is, honestly, like holding holding the candlesticks up in that position was like exhausting. Yeah, it like, was. Jeez. It was exhausting. Well, so so music in addition to film has obviously been a huge part of your life. Um you you've kind of ventured out into the solo world. Yeah. So for those who who are listening that 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 maybe aren't um familiar with with Casey as a solo artist, he actually put on uh, a Valentine's concert uh, this last this last winter, and we went, and it was awesome. Like it was, I can honestly say it was legitimately like mind blowingly awesome. Oh, thanks, man. And I mean, what where'd that come from? Well, you know, I think um, the interesting thing about Gentry is is we all come from more of a solo soloist background. You know, like we were all kind of doing our own thing in theater and. And, uh, and as we came together with Gentry, it, it created this whole other thing and dynamic and, and, um, artistic kind of venture that, that has become really special and amazing and, and impactful to so many people. And, uh, and I think, you know, we're in what our eighth year going on nine years in yeah. Gentry and. And just I, I kind of have gotten to the point where it's like I think I'm ready to um, to just kind of explore some some solo ventures, right? Um, just almost as a desire to to keep pushing myself artistically and, and as a vocalist. And um, you know, there's certain things you can do as a soloist that you can't do in a trio, uh, and and vice versa. And so it's like I just decided like maybe this is time to try something. So. Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been fun and and very fulfilling in a lot of ways. You know, I I we talk about this in our group how it, it's important for when you're in a group and you have a group dynamic to to still have some individuality, to still be pushing yourself on an individual basis artistically and finding kind of those personal artistic outlets. And and the great thing about it is it makes gentry and what we're doing in gentry that much better because we're, we're pulling in the richness of our individual you know artistry and experience and stuff and in, into the group well so that that concert uh if you didn't attend was primarily 80s music yeah yeah michael bolton kenny loggins being some of your biggest musical influences yeah i'm convinced michael bolton is alive and reincarnated <laughs> as casey elliott gosh that, i mean if there was ever a person born to sing that music, it was you. 
Well, I would, I used to hang out in my boxers as a, as a pre pubescent teenager uh, in my parents' living room, just with headphones on. So I can't hardly even hear my voice, but in my head, I'm sounding exactly like Michael Bolton, just, just wailing it. And it just sounded terrible, you know, in, in reality, but I, yeah, I grew up with this, this music and these singers and, um, they're, they're my idols, my vocal idols. So to be able to like do a show where it's their music and I'm singing, it's just, it was, it was fun. So post-concert, uh, well at the concert, um, you more or less hint at least at the idea that, and I know this cause, cause we're friends, but you're, you're putting an album out and you're working on stuff yeah. right now. By the time people listen to this, it very well may be out, but where do things currently stand with that? Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm working on just writing songs right now and, and kind of honing in on, on a sound. Um, the, the good thing and the bad thing about being a musical theater singer and, and a really versatile singer is you can do a lot of things. And so when it comes to figuring out what is your sound, what is your thing as an individual, it's been an interesting process. Cause it's like, well, I like so many things and I can do so many things, but it's like, you kind of have to decide, well, what is it? What is it that people are going to connect with most? You know, what is it you you connect with most? Um, so it's been actually really uh, beneficial for me personally to just explore like, well, what is it that I want to say, you know, both with the lyrics and with the music and how do I want it to connect with people? Even though it could go lots of different ways, it's just really trying to find and hone in what is kind of the, um, the essence of, of who I am as a, as an individual. So it's, it's actually been very therapeutic as well. Cause you know, with Gentry stuff, I think again, when you're in a group, you kind of, um, you create something that's, that's generalized across the different group member members. But when it's a solo thing, it's very personal. Uh, so that's been, it's been fun and therapeutic in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait to hear it, man. Like I said, I, the um what what I heard at the concert was amazing. And I know that it sounds like you're gonna, you know, lean more on the uh the original side than than the covers. But I mean, yeah. whatever it is, I'm excited. Thanks, man. And uh we'll make sure we we push it out when when it's uh when it's available. So I wanna I wanna do another segment, and this is actually one that I'm really excited about. Um, and I think you're gonna laugh as soon as you hear what I've called this segment. So the the segment is called Finish the Lyric. And there's a reason for this. You had to bring up the lyrics. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Like, and we're going to get into the whole like gentry discussion here in a second. Uh, when you when you perform with and tour with and work with someone like we do in gentry, as often as we all do, like you just you you learn everyone's quirks. And um, Casey has been affectionately known as the guy probably most likely to forget a song lyric. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. And I'll say this, you for for every time you have forgotten a song lyric, there is equal if not exponentially more resolve to make sure that something comes out regardless. <laughs> oh yeah, you get really creative. All right, so so to to be fair, I've pulled lyrics from our repertoire. So I'm not going to hit you with a song that you don't know. Okay. Um, so, but, but I, I think it's going to be interesting because for me, it's actually harder to recite lyrics out of context with no music. Yeah. So I'm not even going to tell you the name of the song. Okay. All right. <laughs> and when the brokenhearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer. Let it be. For though they may be parted, though they may be parted, there is still a chance <laughs> that they, you, they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. All right, I I chose that one because I'm like I'll I'll start him with a softball. <laughs> Warm me up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, let it be. Uh, fun fact about that 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 video I think on YouTube, we have like seven eight million views at least as of today. Yeah. And what's crazy about that is that was a music video we almost didn't release. That's true. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. So many crazy stories. It was just like, 
yeah. And, and just think what a mistake that would have been like yeah. just crazy. So, all right, here we go. Number two, um, you'll come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an Ave there for me. And I shall hear those soft you tread above me. I'm doing well. <laughs> and all my grave shall warmer, sweeter be. Okay. I specifically chose that one because it's currently in the set that we're touring with. <laughs> so like, I'll throw him another bone. But I'm going to put a caveat on this one. You can't sing. Oh, geez. This is okay, so I want to see if you can just... Okay. Because when you sing, I, it, uh, it, it comes back quick, yeah, it's right? it's muscle memory. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, all right. And if I ever fall back, if you let me try. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> I knew this was, this was going to be one of them. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh this by the way is an original song gentry original it also happens to be casey's solo are you serious (laughs) okay one more time leave me in one more time and if i ever fall back (laughs) if you let me try (laughs) i have no idea all right you can sing it you can sing it if you let me try (laughs) we got him (laughs) nothing else will matter till i make it right oh yeah i won't stop till there's nothing but you yep there it is when was the last time we even sang that that picture behind you <laughs> yeah so he's he's referring to a picture of valentine's 2017 probably yeah the album release concert Years. or maybe the year before that it's, yeah. it's been a minute so well okay so as we as we kind of wrap things up um the the title of this podcast is the dreamer's den yeah um ironically we're filming uh in my office in, in my den uh this this space has actually played a big role in in concepting the the premise of this podcast. This is the place that I come to 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 ideate, to visualize, to plan, and to ultimately figure out how I want to go out and make my dream a reality. And everybody has that place, either physically or or mentally. That that place that they go to, they escape to. Um, and as I think back to the early days of Gentry, you know, the, the mantra that, that we've adopted here at the podcast, uh, but that, that also, I think, as a group collectively, as Gentry have adopted, is that of daring to dream. And, you know, as you think back almost nine, it'll be nine years this June, uh, at this point in time, we're right in the middle of the first run of Les Mis 2014. Uh, so maybe fast forward a little beyond that to, to May and like, there's this idea of like, we're gonna we're gonna form a boy band, and we're gonna go do something and create something that didn't exist before. Would you, in your wildest dreams, have ever imagined, especially being here looking around at these photos, singing in the NFL, you know, getting to do Les Mis a second time, performing with icons like Kristen Chenoweth? Yeah. At that moment, could you even have fathomed being? That, that that would have been a reality. No, no, it's, I mean, there, there's just so many things that could go wrong, <laughs> you know? And that were kind of stacked against us yeah. from the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. So many things. So do you remember anything about what you thought, what you felt, what your mentality was going into an industry that was hyper competitive, extremely volatile, you know, and not coming from, frankly, a, a market that was known for for producing music yeah. at, at, a, at a super high level, like I would say, generally speaking, right? It's not LA, it's not Nashville. Right. I mean, I think at that, at that point, it, at least for me personally, I, I was young enough to be just like naive and overly optimistic. You know, like, I don't know that I could do it now. I think I become more pessimistic, which is kind of sad in a way, but like, yeah, because there's, 
there's so many reasons why it shouldn't work. And yet I think that's one of the testaments to why this group needed to be is because like, um, there, there are just so many things about it that came together in kind of almost a divinely, you know, pointed way. And, and one of, I think the biggest ones is just who was involved because, um, we, it, most, most groups, most band boy bands out there, whatever you want to call them are, are put together. They're very meticulously and thoughtfully put together. They're auditioned. They're, you know, they're put together by producers and there's investors and there's all this like support around them. We were just like three dudes that then brought in a fourth dude who did some music that we kind of all knew, but not really. Like we just thought, yeah, he's really talented. He'll, he'll do good. And we just went forward. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of miraculously happened and came together. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think, a, a testament to of just taking taking it one step at a time and just figuring it out as you go. And if you have the right people involved, you really can do anything. You can figure anything out. I'm a huge believer in that, that it's that the people is the single most important component to building anything, to, to, to creating, to, to pursuing any type of dream. Um, you know, as I think back, the experiences that I've had in my life of like the, the 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 challenging things I overcame, the things that I got through, it was usually largely in part to the people that I was working in and around to get through that. Yes, and 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 you know, you mentioned timing when you talk about your your acting career, and like just didn't feel right. I agree with you. I I don't know that I, I think the timing had to be perfect for that because what I remembered very distinctly, and and I I credit you actually a, a, to a lot of this is. There was there was never any doubt in our minds as to whether or not it would work. Mm-hmm. There was a whole lot of questions as to how we were going to figure it out. Yeah, but if was never really on the table. It's a good it's a good point because I Zarelda, my wife, had had been wanting me to do some kind of solo album or project for years, some some Broadway th- something or other or something, and I always just thought like eh, I don't I don't get it I don't see it. But as soon as Gentry started to materialize and we, we started talking about it, the idea was kind of born, it clicked immediately. It was like, okay, yes, that, that will work. I don't know how, I don't know exactly what, but the gist of what that, it, that idea is, I can see that working, right? It's, it's crazy how sometimes those ideas, they just, they make sense. And again, you don't know exactly how it's all going to pan out and how you're going to realize this vision, but you know it will work. At what point, well, two questions, actually, as you think back on it, what was, what was the biggest challenge that we overcame? Well, I I think, I think it's the challenge that, that we overcame is actually the challenge that most small businesses and partnerships have. And it's, it's getting to know how to live and work with and, and operate with people right? Like the, one of the, the biggest challenges for most businesses, small businesses, especially in startups is the partnership dynamic. And here you have four artists who are also business people and have different backgrounds and business and creative and different things. And you've got to somehow make it work together. And we're at different stages of life. You know, I've got four kids and, and, and not that familiar with each other. Right. Yeah. We, we knew each other from the shows, but yeah, like, but I would say more acquaintances than like, like really, really close friends. Now we had drawn closer through the experience of Les Mis, right? But you know, to put it in uh, even more like blunt terms, so like Stephen and I were we performed together in college. Um, we we always laugh about this now, but we we had been on a, a tour. It was a two week tour, and it was uh, almost like kind of a residency. Like we went to a location and stayed there for a couple weeks and performed every night. And we actually, uh, we stayed in the same villa. Like they put like four, four of us at a time in each little place. And I don't remember having a single conversation with him. And we were roommates for two weeks. Wow. And, and I, I, we, we've talked about this, he and I, and we, we laugh at it. Like we both thought the other person hated each other. (laughs) (laughs) So we, we went back to that location as a group, you know, a few years ago and, and we just relived that experience. We were like, 
So can we talk about something? Remember like 2000, like gosh, it would have been like 2010 maybe. Yeah. Like we were roommates. Like, did you hate me? Like, <laughs> I thought you hated me. It's like, no. <laughs> After all this time. <laughs> so I, I agree with you. I think, you know, as people ask me, like, what what's the what's the biggest accomplishment of gentry? It's the fact that we've survived each other yeah. for nine years. Because no, you it, go through so much. There's so many reasons why it 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 could potentially not yeah. work. Yeah, and, and it's it really is so important. And we kind of joke around about it. People ask us that sometimes, like, you know, how do you guys get along? It's like, well, it's we fight sometimes, but we get over it, we work through it. And and really, like the fact that we we are able to argue or have disagreements or tiffs or whatever, but but get through them has made our relationships that much stronger, has made our business stronger, has everything is better. And it's like it's really a testament to, you know, if you can get through conflict and challenges, challenges in your business, in your relationship, whatever it is, and come out on the other side, you will be, you will have a better relationship. You will have a stronger relationship. Um, vulnerability, conflict makes relationships stronger if you can get through that. So the reality is we're we're not going to be the last to ever have a crazy dream to, to sit back and say, and let's, let's look at it contextually in the entertainment world. Entertainment's not going anywhere. COVID tried to wipe it out didn't succeed. It's back stronger than ever. Uh, we'll call this the, the dreamer's digest. We're going to, we're going to distill everything that you've learned as a, as a aspiring film actor, solo artist, uh, member of Gentry down into uh, a few short statements. If you could give one piece of advice to someone who was at the very beginning of their journey, staring down this long road that, that inevitably follows when you go to pursue a, the world of entertainment, knowing what you know now, what would that piece of advice be to that person? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, I think I would, <clears throat> I think I would tell myself, expect it to be hard, <clears throat> you know, expect things to go wrong and, and be okay with it. Like that is part of the process. There will always be challenges because I think throughout my, my career and life and stuff, I, when things have gotten hard, I've questioned like, am I doing the right thing? Am, am I doing it the right way? Like maybe I should give up, maybe I should do something else. And it's like, no, like when it gets hard, that's actually evidence that you're, you're doing something right. Because if it's not if it's not hard, if it hasn't gotten hard, if you haven't over, you know, if you haven't come up against really immense challenges, you probably haven't scratched deep enough. You probably haven't gone deep enough in, into what you're doing. And so, yeah, I, I would just say, keep, keep going, keep digging. And, and if you can get past the challenges, like what's on the other side is, is success. All right, man, this has been awesome. Like I, this has been great. Thank you so much for joining. Where where can people find you? Where can they learn more about Gentry? Yeah, so uh, gentrymusic.com, uh, Gentry Music on, on all the socials. Uh, my my solo stuff is just Casey C. Elliott on Instagram. And, and I just started using TikTok. A little, a little late to the game there. Are you doing dances on TikTok? I <laughs> know, just singing in my garage. Um. Yeah, the, the Garage Concert Series is something not to be missed. By the way, <laughs> it is an interesting phenomenon. I, I truly do love singing in the garage, and it turns out other people like watching me in the garage. It's kind of kind of weird, voyeuristic. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Once again, you've been listening to Casey Elliott of Stage and Screen here on the Dreamers Den podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Casey, you can visit his website, caseyelliott.com. And you can watch him continue to follow his dreams on Instagram, as he said, at KCC Elliott. And if you liked what you've heard, don't forget to give us a follow across all social media, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Dreamers Den Podcast. And you can, of course, listen to all the episodes uh, wherever you uh, get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music. On behalf of the entire Dream Team, I'm Brad Robbins, reminding you to work hard, be kind, and always dare to dream.